Brothers and sisters in Islam, stories in the Quran occupy a very large portion of it. But one of the distinct stories, which is one of the longest stories of the prophets, and that which was repeated more than any other story in the Quran to the extent that Al Imam Al Suyuti quoted some of the scholars saying, It is as if the story of Musa and Fir'aun occupied the entire Quran. But why? Because it is an example, a detailed example of the struggle of the conflict between truth and falsehood, between the followers of the truth, between the believers, and between the followers of falsehood. And because that story clearly reflects and shows how Allah Azza wa Jal protects, preserves, and supports the truth and its followers. Despite the minor details that, takes pla that take place during the struggle and the conflict, it's very obvious it started from the day Musa alayhi salatu was was born. Because he was born, du born during a time when Fir'aun was killing every single newborn male. And it continued until Allah Azza wa Jal rescued Musa and his followers alayhi salatu wasalam and killed Fir'aun and his followers. You see Fir'aun feared that the children of Israel would outnumber him and therefore take his kingdom away. So he's decided to kill every new ma newborn male and would keep the women alive. Anytime a woman bore a child, a male newborn, he would be killed. During that time, Musa alayhi salatu was was born. But the protection the support of Allah Azza wa Jal started then, before, way before he became a messenger and a prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah inspired his mother and ardi'ih, suckle him. فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْ But when you fear for his life, then throw him into the river. وَلَا تَخَافِي and fear not, وَلَا تَحْزَنِي And grieve not. Allahu Akbar. How can this be? How can this happen in human scale? How can a woman throw her suckling child in a river, not knowing his destiny, and knowing that someone is out there looking for every newborn child to kill him, and not fear, and not be saddened. But that's the command of Allah, which He inspired the mother of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with. And she, she did the very thing. She started suckling him, but when she felt that there is a threat on his life, she prepared a box and she threw him into the river. But where did Musa alayhi salatu wasalam land? He landed in the castle of Fir'aun. He was picked up by his people and brought to the castle when his wife, Asiyah bint Muzahim, Rahmatullahi alayha, who believed in Musa alayhi salatu wasalam when he became a messenger, later, his love fell in her heart. She sympathized with him. So she begged Fir'aun not to kill him, and he did not. 
another protection and support from Allah Azza wa Jalla to Musa, to the truth and its followers. So the heart of the mother of Musa was filled with sadness. But Allah Azza wa Jalla wanted to relieve her. She used to tell her sister to go out and check around and see what the situation was. And Allah Azza wa Jalla decreed, which is another thing, that Musa alayhi salatu was salam refused to nurse from any woman. So they went out to the market looking for someone to suckle him. And his sister being around, she suggested to them, that household, that there's a good woman there, which is his mother. And they called her. She suckled him, he accepted. So they turned him to her, returned her own child for her to suckle and get paid for what she's doing. Another sign of support and protection from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam grew up in the castle of Fir'aun. When he became strong, Allah granted him wisdom and he used to judge between people. He became a known figure and one day he was entering the city and he, tossed, he saw two people fighting. One from his people, the children of Israel, and one from the people of Fir'aun. So he supported the person from the children of Israel against the other and he killed the other one. He struck him and he killed him. The news spread, Fir'aun discovered that and he became adamant he must kill Musa. A pious man rushed to Musa informing him alayhi salatu wasalam, of the plot against him and that he was being searched for in order to be executed. So he rushed out of Egypt, headed towards Median in Palestine. And there, Allah Azza wa Jal blessed him and he got married and stayed for many years. After over 10 years, Musa alayhi salatu was salam longed to go back to his uh, homeland and see his people. So he traveled back from Median to Egypt. And on his way back, Allah Azza wa Jal spoke to him and commanded him to convey the message of monotheism Worshipping one and only Allah to Fir'aun and his people. And as soon as Musa reached Egypt, he went to Fir'aun. He called him to Allah Azza wa Jal and called his people to Allah Azza wa Jal. And Fir'aun demanded a sign proving that he was a messenger and not a fake. And one of the miracles of Musa alayhi salatu was salam were, was his stick. So he threw his stick and it turned into a huge snake. But at the time of Fir'aun, magicians used to do a trick where they would throw ropes and sticks and people would imagine that these were snakes. So Fir'aun took this as a challenge that he's a magician, so I'm going to challenge you with my magicians. So he called his own people, his own magicians, and he agreed with Musa on a certain day during daytime. They gathered and they threw their ropes and sticks. And then Musa threw his stick, which turned into an actual huge snake, which attacked these fake snakes, swallowed them all. At that point, the magicians of Fir'aun realized that this is not a fake because they knew they were fake. But that the snake 
that became of the sick of Musa was not a fake thing. So they immediately kneeled down and prostrated to Allah Azza wa Jal in belief. They all believed in Allah. At that, Fir'aun became very angered and enraged at these magicians and at Musa. And he started threatening them and threatening them. But what happens when faith penetrates the heart and the soul and it settles firmly and it becomes deeply rooted, nothing matters. They said to him, فَقُضِ مَا أَنْتَ قَامْتْ Do whatever you want to do. إِنَّمَا تَقُضِ هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا All you can do is related, is pertaining to this worldly life. They said, إِنَّا نَطْمَعُ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لَنَا رَبُّنَا خَطَايَانَا We hope that Allah would forgive our sins. It didn't matter. You want to kill? Kill. You want to prosecute? Prosecute. All that you do is going to be in this life. And then there is the prize. There is the gift from Allah. That's what we are looking for. And he started harming them and harming them. <coughs> he started harming them and harming them. And they were firm, firm and steadfast. Until one night or one day, Fir'aun decided he must kill Musa and his followers. Again, support came from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah inspired Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that this was the plan. So take your people secretly at night and leave Egypt. So Musa gathered his followers and at night secretly and quietly they took off. Later, Fir'aun discovered this and became very angry that his plot didn't work out and that he missed Musa and his people. So he gathered all his soldiers and he compiled a huge army and he headed the army and took off in pursuit of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his people. But then Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his followers Banu Israel were faced with a reality which they could not escape. They reached the seashore, the Red Sea. They were exhausted. And by that time, they could see the army of Fir'aun. It had filled the horizon as huge as it was. What would be the feelings of anyone in that situation? An enemy behind him, fully equipped, firm to kill him. And in front of him, there is nothing but a sea. Some of the stories said that one of the pious followers of Musa got on his horse and took off into the sea, trying to see if they can escape. But it didn't work out. And they became closer and closer. And fear increased. Hope diminished. And the children of Israel came complaining to Musa alayhi salatu Inna la mudrakun. We're overtaken. That's it. This is the end. But no, there is a difference between Musa 
And every sincere and true firm believer in Allah and a normal person, there is something called trust and certainty in Allah Azza wa Jal. Reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal. Immediately, without hesitation, the answer from Musa came, Kalla, inna ma'ya rabbi sahdeen. No, indeed, I have my Lord with me. He will guide me. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What kind of a heart is this? What was the result of this? Immediately, the command comes from Allah to Musa. Strike the sea with your stick. The unexpected happened. فانفلق it split فكان كل فرق كالطود العظيم and every portion of the water stood like a great like a huge towering mountain and then Allah Azza wa Jal commanded the wind to blow and it dried the seabed so they can walk on it what a miracle Look at the timing of relief when their souls reached the throat and their eyes shifted in fear. That's when the relief came, but it was the result of the certitude Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had in Allah. The trust, the firm belief in Allah azza wa jal, which was in the heart of Musa. Alayhi salatu wasalam. The children of Israel were relieved, were happy. So they rushed. Allah Azza wa Jal commanded him and his people to pass through that. So they rushed in it with joy. They saw a great sign from Allah which made their hearts firm on their hearts firm in on faith. And by the time they had reached the other side of the sea, the army of Fir'aun reached the first side of it. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam attempted to strike the sea again. So it would collapse again and prevent Fir'aun and his people from following them. But Allah Azza wa Jal commanded him not to do. Anitruk al Bahra Rahwa. Leave it as it is. In the situation it is in. Innahum jundum mughraqoon. Indeed, they are an army to be drowned. When Fir'aun reached, he realized that this is a miracle that can only be done. By the Creator. How can water stand up like a mountain with nothing holding it except Kun Fayakun? Be and it is. He was firm that this is the work of Allah. So he became reluctant. He was hesitating, going in and then going back, going in and going back. But his arrogance and pride forced him to go in. He was claiming, Ana Rabbukum al -a'la. I am your Lord. So how can he be reluctant in front of his followers? So he commanded them and they, go, they all gone in. They went in. And when they were all inside, that split, dried path, Allah commanded the sea collapse and they were all killed فأهلكنا موسى ومن معه أجمعين we destroyed فرعون ومن معه أجمعين we destroyed فرعون and all those who were with him but one thing remains to be said is that Allah Azza wa Jal killed him but kept him. 
killed him but preserved his body to be a sign for those who have ration, those who have sincerity in their search for the truth from the non-believers. It was a sign, it was a miracle by Allah to remain until Allah Azza wa Jal inherits earth until the day of judgment. And Allah Azza wa Jal rescued Musa and his followers. That destruction of Fir'aun and rescue of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his followers happened on the day of Ashura, the 10th of Al-Muharram, which coincides with tomorrow. It was a great day, a great day to remember for the believers a source of a surety, a source of steadfastness. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam, as reported by Ibn Abbas in the book of Al Imam al Bukhari, Musa alayhi salatu was salam used to fast that day in gratitude to Allah. And then the Prophet وسلم, started fasting it when he discovered the reason behind the fast. And he said, we are more deserving of Musa than the children of Israel. And he commanded the believers to fast it. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to keep our hearts firm on his faith and to make us amongst those who listen and follow the best of that which they hear. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah wa lakum. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. Ashura is approaching and the Ummah is going through different types of difficulties and challenges. And the Muslims are in one of the weakest states to the extent that many Muslims lost hope that Islam would ever again be in the leadership. But Reflecting on the story of Musa and Fir'aun, one sees that hope is there and victory is very near. You see, we have to be deserving of the victory before it takes place. There are oppressed Muslims everywhere. Killing is happening in Muslims everywhere, right? And everybody is waiting and hoping for the rescue of Allah, the support of Allah. But the important question is, do we deserve the support of Allah? As an ummah or even as individuals, do we deserve that victory? Do we deserve that support of Allah? Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu, in tansuru allaha yansurkum, wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. O you who have believed, if you support Allah, support the religion of Allah that is, if you support Allah, Allah will support you, and make your feet steadfast and firm. Are we like that? Wa'ad Allah al-ladheena amanu minkum, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ إِيمَانٌ وَعَمَلٌ صَالِحٌ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah has promised those who believed amongst you and done righteous deeds to surely give them succession in authority upon the earth. آمَنُوا 
belief and good actions. Let's, every single one of us, put himself on the scale of Allah, on the scale of Islam, and judge himself sincerely. Do I match? Do I deserve? Am I worthy? Because you see, the Ummah is a compilation of individuals. So don't undermine your sin. Your sin reflects at the Ummah at large. And I would like to conclude, and I would leave this question for each one of us to ask himself if he is doing his job correctly, if he is in the position which pleases Allah, is he willing to die now or ready rather to die now and meet Allah? Does he feel that if he dies, Allah is going to be pleased with him? I'll leave that answer to you, but if it's a no, then you need to start working right now. Right in this masjid. By pledging to Allah to give up everything wrong and to fulfill everything that you must fulfill. Finally, brothers and sisters, during these times, people become occupied with what's going on. So occupied that they become overwhelmed and they attach very little importance to the path of their salvation, which is worshiping Allah, establishing servitude to Allah during times of hardships and difficulties, during times of tests and trials, a believer should persevere patiently, should put his trust and hope in Allah, should worship Allah Azza wa Jal as much as he possibly can. Ma'atul ibn Yasar, may Allah be pleased with him. Narrated that the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, Ibadatun fil harji kahijratin ilayhi. Worship during times of trials, is equivalent in reward to migrating to me. Brothers, reflecting on the story of Musa and Fir'aun tells us that victory is in the hands of Allah Azza Victory is but from Allah. And that when Allah Azza wa Jal wants to rescue the oppressed and support them, he facilitates the means. And that the struggle and the conflict between truth and falsehood is an everlasting until Allah Azza wa Jal ends this world. And that the good consequence and the final consequence, regardless of the minor details in the middle, is in favor of the believers. But they have to be deserving. They have to gain it. They have to earn it. They have to be as Allah Azza wa Jal wants them to be. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulubi thabbit qulubana ala deen. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulubi thabbit qulubana ala deen. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulubi thabbit qulubana ala deen.